this, I'm like, welcome everyone! On this video, I'm going to complete my day in southern and central Illinois. I'll start this video in the capital city of Springfield, then start to make my way east. And along the way, I'll check out some roadside oddities and attractions. Thanks so much for joining me. Let's go! I've been to Springfield many times. For this visit, I'm in Springfield, Illinois for just two reasons. The first reason is I was hungry and grabbed some lunch. Don't worry, I didn't film that so you don't have to look at me eating. The second reason is to pay respects to Abraham Lincoln at his final resting place, the Oak Ridge Cemetery. The structure with the obelisk on top is where Lincoln and some of his immediate family members are buried. I'm a little too short to rub Lincoln's nose. Even if we were allowed to, I'm not tall enough. <laughs> Just a quick visit to pay my respects to the best president. I've got to cover a lot of ground and I've been lucky with rain so far. Let's head to the next stop. I'm now in the town of Chestnut. It's a very small town, population of just 220 people. There are mostly farms surrounding the town. But I'm here because Chestnut is known for something distinctive in the state of Illinois. There's a small monument here that notes that Chestnut is the geographic center of the state of Illinois. The marker reads, Pride in the Past, Faith in the Future. There's a bald eagle statue on top. The north direction shows where we are in Illinois. West looks like an ear of corn. South looks like a train. And east looks like a representation of a family. Then, of course, the, the bald eagle right there. I'm in Clark Park, established in 1872 when they designed this town. Not very big of a grassy area, just enough space to have a brick path and surround for this little monument. 
Welcome to Chestnut, Geographical Center of Illinois, founded by Gary Calvert, 1993. I think that 1993 might be the monument, because the town was established in 1872, as the other sign mentioned. I'm not even sure where the nearest big city is from here. It was about 40 minutes from Springfield, maybe that's the closest. But it's an easy 40 minute drive. Chestnut is on Highway 54, but this town is so small, so don't blink or you'll miss it. Anyway, on to my next stop. It's starting to drizzle again, but I'm still continuing on. I'm heading east on Interstate 72, but getting off of this exit to Pena. I have a 35 minute drive south from here to my next destination. I'm now in the city of Pena. Population is 5,700 according to that sign. The rain has stopped for the moment. I'm in this field, and there's a hand holding a globe. Just a hand. I'm not sure how this hand got here, or why it's holding a globe. And where is the rest of the body? This is probably one of the stranger roadside attractions I've seen in a while. Does anyone know the story of why the hand holding a globe arrived in this empty field? Please leave me a comment. There's still more roadside oddity wackiness across the field here. I'll go ahead and walk over there real quick. I find another hand over here. Still no body attached to this hand. But I will say the hand has a pretty good manicure. Even the skin is a better color. Over here is a big red boot, all by itself, still no body. The boot has a, the word Jetson. I'm not sure if that's a boot making company. Seriously, if anyone knows how the, these giant hands got here, please leave me a comment. There's the Pena water tower in the distance, so we're not far from the center of town. It does look like the hand and the nails were painted recently. And why is there a football scoreboard here? Looking just past the scoreboard, there's the other hand that was holding the globe. I'm not on a football field, so why is the scoreboard here? Walking around this hand, it looks like there's a pole inside. That might have been attached to something else at one time. Maybe the body? Oh, and one last thing. By the pretty hand in the boot is this red car on a metal pole. Perhaps there was a car dealer near here? Well, I spent a lot of time here trying to figure out why all this is here. Seems so random. Anyway, time to head east to my next stop. After driving about 40 miles east, I'm now in the town of Gaze, Illinois. Gaze has a population of just 209 people, but they have an interesting structure here. I'm at Gene Goodwin Park. This was built in memory of the creator of the two-story outhouse, and there it is at the end of this gravel path. This display has a number of newspaper articles and some pictures of the two-story outhouse. One headline was funny. 103-year-old crapper, a main attraction in gaze. This outhouse was created in 1872. Let's get a closer look at this old crapper. I bet the rule of thumb is to always choose the top stall because, you know, gravity. Also, I couldn't help but notice this outhouse apparently has its own mailing address at 1022 something street, I guess. The outhouse is locked, so if I need to use the restroom, I'm out of luck. Also, they removed the steps going to the second floor. I wonder how long the outhouse was actually in operation. 
here's more proof Gaze is proud of this outhouse. This blue sign right off the main thoroughfare. It's time for dinner and I know a place not far from here. I'm now in Mattoon, Illinois. I was here last year and I'm in the mood for a real burger at the original Burger King. They don't sell Whoppers here, just fresh burgers made to order and the fries are fantastic. They're the crispy kind. Take a look at this. This is a good looking burger, made with love I'm sure. And they gave me a giant bag of fries. And of course a giant cup of Diet Coke. So delicious. They also sell ice cream here. Look at this peanut butter sundae. It looks like I topped it with, cher with cherry pieces. It wasn't a whole cherry. This was delicious too, a nice treat after a lot of driving. I could only stay about 30 minutes as I needed to get to Indiana before it got completely dark and I have a few things to see on the way. So, on to the next stop. Just a few minutes north is the city of Charleston, Illinois. Hey, I like some pancakes and sausage. But since it's the evening, I'll have to settle for this unusual Lincoln wood carving. This wood carving is surrounded by fencing, so you're not able to damage it or climb on it. This sculpture sure does look unusual. I'm trying to zoom in and get a better look at the marker next to the carving. This marker has the entirety of the Gettysburg Address. It sometimes feels like I've been away from home for four score and seven years. I mentioned this wood sculpture looked unusual. Lincoln's hands are very small, and it looks like he was carved as a fat man or his suit is baggy, so his head looks abnormally small. Apparently the locals called this sculpture Tiny head Headed Lincoln, so I guess I'm not the only one who thinks his head is way too small. His bow tie is longer than his itty bitty head. Anyway, I have about three hours to see a handful of attractions, so it's time to go. Now in the town of Martinsville which is located east of Casey. This is the agricultural fair, home of the Great Midwest Trot and Pace. Over here at the entrance is the world's largest horseshoe. I guess Casey doesn't have all the big things. I wonder how big the horse has to be to be fitted for this gigantic horseshoe. This horseshoe weighs 1,144 pounds and is 5 feet and 8 inches tall and a little over 4 feet wide. It is still the largest horseshoe in terms of weight, but there is a horseshoe in, in Mumbai that is nearly 4 times as large, but quite a bit lighter. But this one is still pretty big. I'm racing against the clock to get a couple more places before it gets completely dark. Now I'm in Marshall, Illinois, which is very close to the Indiana state line. I'm parked just off US 40, and I'm panning around to show you this gravel road. But if you look at the end of the gravel road, you see the road turns into red brick. This is the original brick pavement for the National Highway from the year 1918. The National Highway is by far the oldest interstate highway in the country, with construction starting when Thomas Jefferson was president. That's right, way older than the more famous Route 66, even older than the Lincoln Highway. The National Highway was 
mostly a dirt road that ran from Washington, D.C. to Vandalia, Illinois. During World War I, there was a need to transport supplies from Illinois to the East Coast ports, so the government quickly paved the national highway so heavy loads can be transported. I'm going to take a quick drive on it, so I can say I actually drove on the original national road. Not going too far, though. There are a couple other things to see in Marshall. Starting with the Clark County Courthouse. Near the front door is the world's largest gavel. Does that mean the world's largest judge holds, the, holds court here? This gavel was placed here in 2018 and is dedicated to the judges of Clark County. This gavel is 66 feet in length. Down here is a quote from Lincoln. The best way to predict the future is to create it. The gavel is made from red oak, similar to the standard sized gavels, and this has been certified as the world's largest by the Guinness Book of World Records. I wonder how much this gavel weighs. Marshall has a few other things to see, so let's quickly check them out. Walking across the street, this painted mural caught my eye, Lincoln in the Gwinnock Well. Actually, I think it's a sign that's attached to the wall. And what exactly is a Gwinnock Well? I've seen a few of these lion sculptures around town. There must be some significance to the lion. This lion is on a gravel painted platform. This is also a picture attached to the wall. It says Historic National Road and features an old truck driving over an old bridge. Marshall is proud to be the, along the National Road. In the same parking lot of that picture is another lion sculpture. This one is decorated with these interesting patterns on a red background. On another side of the courthouse is a statue of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln is clean shaven in the sculpture, and the marker says it was donated to the residents of Clark County back in 2009. I have one more stop, Mr. President. I will, ha will I have enough light to see it? It's about 10 miles away. I'm in Terre Haute, Indiana, a large college town about 90 minutes west of Indianapolis. I might be able to, to show you this cool sculpture in the downtown area. I'm at an arena and at Indiana State University, home of the Sycamores. Indiana State has a very famous alumnus who played basketball. Probably my great grandmother's favorite player of all time. This is a 15 foot tall sculpture of Larry Bird. This marker says Larry the Legend Bird started at Indiana State in 1975, nearly won a, an NCAA championship. He won three NBA titles as a member of the Boston Celtics. He also coached and later became an executive for the Indiana Pacers. Larry Bird is the only person to have won NBA Most Valuable Player, Coach, and Executive. That's, um, that's impressive to be a winner in all levels of an NBA team. Most impressive. The sculpture was dedicated in 2014. Why is this sculpture 15 feet tall? Because Magic Johnson's statue is a mere 13 feet tall. NBA rivalries never die, I guess. Terre Haute is also the birthplace of, co of the Coca-Cola bottle, as you'll see on the mural to the left, but I'm thinking you might be enjoying the incredible sunset. And that's it! I finally got to my hotel room at about 11pm, Plus, I cross from Central to Eastern Time.
So I spent about 14 hours on the road today. That's a long day. I've got a busy day planned for tomorrow in Indiana, and you'll see that next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!